trying not to wake the cat. Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter and I'm back with another cleaning type test, cleaning test. I tried a bunch of different cleaners. So I've been on a journey with my typewriter collection to try a bunch of different cleaners. When I started cleaning typewriters, I didn't really know anything about how to clean them properly and I mostly just used compressed air to clean out the internals. When I got into issues with the outside of machines, things like inky fingerprints or dirt, or smudges or issues with their paint, I really wasn't sure where to turn. I eventually found a product recommended by some other collectors named Simple Green, which I tried on a typewriter project and it worked really well. And for a long time, that was kind of my main standard cleaning product for the outside of machines. However, there is limited distribution for the product of Simple Green cleaners. So I wanted to go out and test a bunch of other cleaners. Now I've tested some like scrubbing bubbles and method cleaner, but I have two more to test today, as well as another air duster to try on the inside of my new typewriter project. This is a typewriter, obviously. This is a 1964 Smith Corona Sterling in the 58X series. I found it at an antique mall that also had a flea market section. When I found it, it was broken. The carriage return arm didn't increase the lines at all. It didn't move the machine forward. So I was going to pass on it until the woman selling it told me she was going to throw it away. So I went back and bought it for about $10. Now this machine is a little bit dirty, a little bit grimy, so I wanted to try some new products on this machine specifically. The two new cleaners I wanted to try were LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner, which I've tried before, but they've reformulated. And then I also wanted to try something I found at the grocery store. This is an OxyClean product, but it doesn't have any bleach in it. So I did want to try that on cleaning as well. When it comes to typewriter cleaners and working with painted surfaces, you want to avoid anything that has bleach in it. That can really ruin the finish of your machine. Another caveat here is that it really depends on the finish of your machine, which cleaner is going to work best for you. On black, shiny finish machines, I found that car wax seems to do a much better job of glossing them up than something like a traditional detergent or cleaner. And most people seem to have pretty good luck with just soap and water, but I really feel the need to go in there and scrub with a toothbrush in between things. I'm slightly concerned that I probably should have been a dentist because I have this like really weird sick fascination with going in between the keys on your keyboard and scrubbing them out and like picking things out of them like I'm picking plaque out of teeth it's been a weird couple of cleaning experiences. But I wanted to try these two new products. Now I wanted to start with this LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner. I found this at the dollar store and when I walked by, I noticed that it was in some different packaging than previously. This looks almost like Method Cleaner. So I wanted to test it against Method Cleaner to see what would happen. It looks like the exact same bottle style. The label looks very similar. I thought it was interesting that LA's Totally Awesome would reformulate or repackage to look more like a higher end cleaning product like Method. Now I did find a couple things with this. I have previously tried LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner in the yellow bottle with the red font and it had um, some tendencies to remove some of the painted logoing on surfaces. So I was a little bit nervous to use it. So what I did was I took this onto a typewriter case. This is the typewriter case for my Smith Corona Sterling in the blue color that I found at a Salvation Army. I wanted to use this on a case surface. This is normally where I start my testing projects where I can just kind of spray it on. I know it's not gonna do too much damage, especially on these 60s cases. They're much more plastic and they're very good for testing cleaning products. On one side here, I have Method Cleaner. On the other side, I have LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner in its new scent. And I did notice a couple things. One thing I had never realized on cleaning bottles before is that some of them tell you you're supposed to rinse after you spray and scrub. So I noticed that on this cleaner first. The directions tell you to spray it, to scrub it, and then go back in with a wet washcloth or wet rag and rinse it. I never experienced that before, so that was something new to me and it adds an extra step to the process, which I'm not the world's biggest fan of just because I don't like making cleaning even more hassling than it already is, but I do kind of like that the idea behind it is maybe it'll remove that sticky residue that you get when you put on spray on cleaners. What I noticed testing this directly against another cleaner is it wasn't as soapy. That, I feel that way about shampoo. Like if your shampoo foams up really well, it makes you think that your shampoo is more effective. I don't know why I feel that way, but I feel the same way about cleaners. Method Cleaner was a little bit more soapy upon spraying than this Method Cleaner was. Another thing that I thought was really strange is there are no ingredients listed on this bottle, and that is a big selling point with Method Cleaner. They had the idea of being like environmentally friendly and telling you exactly what's in your bottle. 
No ingredients listed here on this LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner. There is no discoloration when you spray it on surfaces. I do notice, however, that even though you have to rinse after, it feels really tacky after spraying it. It feels like really sticky. I went back in eventually with a wet cloth and wiped down this whole surface again, just because it was really sticky. And that really bothered me when I was cleaning the keys on the Smith Corona Sterling, just because I felt like the keys were attracting more dust and dirt as I was cleaning them, which wasn't making it a very effective cleaner. The other thing I've heard with a lot of cleaning products is how strong the smell can be and how obnoxious that can be to a user. I myself am pretty sensitive to smells. I can get headaches pretty easily from really strong smells. That's why I don't use candles anymore or perfumes. And so I've noticed that with cleaners as well. LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner had a very strong smell. The Method Cleaner I have has a very strong smell. It's pretty clean and I use that in the bathroom on the shower. It just is a very nice, clean, fresh smell. This is a cherry blossom scent and it's really gross when you first spray it but after it settles for a little bit it actually does smell really good it's just the initial spray that's like overwhelmingly chemically and like gross smelling but eventually it does calm down and it leaves a nice subtle scent after it's calmed down a little bit but if that's something that you're very susceptible to that's something to keep in mind the next cleaner I wanted to try was this OxyClean 3-in-1 cleaner I found at the grocery store with no bleach in it. Anytime I try a new cleaner, I like to try it on both the case that I'm trying to clean with, and I also like to do a patch test on the machine. This is really important for making sure that you're not discoloring the machine in any way. There have been cleaners that I have tried on a patch test that have made the paint react with like bubbling or have removed textured surfaces or have really discolored a machine. You don't want something that's too strong to the point where it's white away the paint. It's really important to keep in mind. So I wanted to try this new OxyClean cleaner on this 1964 Smith Corona Sterling, which was in bad shape when I got it. I tried it first on the case. And here's what I really liked about it. It foamed up really well. It's like a visible way to kind of tell that you're cleaning. I only had to spray the whole case over once. I didn't have to do multiple passes on it like I usually have to do with something like Simple Green. It foamed really well and it got in the textured surfaces really well. So as you can see here, it worked really well on this outside case section. Then I did a patch test on the individual spring green machine itself. I was a little bit nervous. This looks like a much higher intensity cleaner just because it's used for things like a bathroom or a kitchen. But I was really surprised that during the patch test, nothing reacted negatively. Scrubbing Bubbles is also like this. It's a very foamy product, but I found it to be very gentle as well when cleaning typewriter surfaces. In fact, I've used Scrubbing Bubbles with a toothbrush and had very good success on these textured surfaces. The other thing I liked about this cleaner specifically is that there's no rinsing required. That is something that I really disliked about that method cleaner that I had to go back in and add an extra step. And there's no sticky residue left after cleaning. I cleaned the case and then I let it go for a couple of days to air out a little bit in my apartment and there's no sticky residue on the outside of the case and there's no sticky residue on the outside of the machine. That is something I've heard from some other users of Simple Green is that sometimes it can leave a residue depending on how much you've applied. I didn't want to get a tacky residue on the outside of my machine. It just attracts more dust. This didn't leave any residue. It is a very soft, clean finish, and it feels very, um, what's another word for clean? It feels refreshed after using it. It does smell a little bit like OxyClean. It is a strong smell. Anytime you're cleaning anything using chemicals or cleaning products, you should be in a ventilated area, but it's not nearly as nasty smelling to me, at least, as LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner. So it's foamy, doesn't leave a residue, and I don't have to rinse after. I really did like using it on this surface specifically. Another thing that I've tried on this machine that I've never tried before is I didn't remove all of the dirt or residue off of the machine. On this 1964 Smith Corona Sterling, there is a little personalized logo across the front that looks like it was written in whiteout that says, I love Dave. I don't know who Dave is, but I felt like it was something that really added to the character of the machine. Typically when I get a machine, I go through and clean everything. I remove anything that was on it previously. But every once in a while, I run into some identifying factor that I just kind of want to retain with the machine to keep some character. I posted this typewriter on Instagram and somebody said that they would riot if I removed this front little section. So I decided to leave it on the machine. And it was really nice and easy to use this cleaner around that identification and leave it on the machine. 
Now, if you're cleaning a typewriter, you get to do whatever you want with it. It is your typewriter. But I liked the idea of keeping a little bit of character here on this machine, and I can always go back in and remove it later. It should remove pretty easily with another uh, cleaner on that surface. But for now, I kind of like that personalization and that little bit of history to go along with the machine. But it's something I hadn't tried before, leaving a mistake on the typewriter itself. Another product I'm trying here, which is brand new to me, is an air duster. Now, I previously purchased an air vacuum slash air compressor on Amazon for, I think it was under $30, but on one side it was a vacuum, and on the other side it uses the back fan of the vacuum to be kind of like an air compressor or air duster. I've used this product quite a few times on cleaning machines here in my apartment. I liked it because it's handheld and small and not very loud. I'm very sensitive to loud noises in my apartment, so I wanted something that was really low level noise, but also was very effective at cleaning. And as nice as this air duster vacuum I got was, it really wasn't very strong or powerful when it came to removing real gunk inside of the machine. Not nearly as powerful as my portable air compressor or the large air compressor that I was using when I was at home. So things might get stuck in there more often. I ended up using a lot more Q-tips to dust because I couldn't get into a lot of smaller spaces with concentrated air in my little vacuum combo. So I was recently gifted this air duster, which is only for air dusting, not vacuuming. And I think that this works a lot better. So this is the air duster. I don't know what brand it is because I was gifted this. It just says air duster across the front, but there are quite a few listings that look just like this on Amazon. And I was really impressed with this product. It's nice and handheld. It's pretty hefty. Like you could do some damage if you hit somebody with this. I don't know why I always think of that when I'm testing products, but it's pretty easy to use. It is nice and handheld. It's hefty and it's got a bunch of different nozzles that you can also attach on the front of the air duster itself to concentrate that air pathway. When you are using compressed air, you want to compress that air into the tiniest pathway possible to make it the strongest in one area. So that way, if you've got a smaller and smaller nozzle, you are concentrating that area even into a more pinpoint fashion to really get at that dust and remove it from your machine. So I really liked this for that. It was way more powerful than the little fan at the back of my vacuum because it was concentrated on specifically making air for blowing out of the machine. And it had a much more concentrated surface area to make it more powerful. I also liked about this machine that it was USB chargeable and there's a little light on the front of this machine which I found to be incredibly effective and I really wish my other machine had that. On the front end of this little portable hand duster is a little LED light that turns on when you turn on the duster and it lights up the area at which you are blowing away stuff. And I found that to be really effective and useful. It kind of combines the two tools of a flashlight and an air compressor. In order to operate this, you do have to hold down the power button for a few seconds until it starts. I always found it a little bit confusing when I was turning it on. I didn't know if I was turning it on or not because sometimes I'd try this and it wouldn't work and sometimes I tried it and it did work. It takes a little bit of patience there, but another thing I really like about this air duster specifically is that it's got three different settings of power. Now I started on the lowest level because it is the quietest of the air duster levels, but it is a lower level of air compression. And then you move up to the next level and it gets like a harder air coming out of it. And then at the top level, it's even more air. The fan is just pumping faster. So you do have three different levels that you can use here of air passing through this air duster, and that's really nice when you're working on a machine. Sometimes you wanna be really subtle, you're just blowing dust or cat hair off of a typewriter, and that might be great for that. But when you need to get in and get into that real dusty, grimy area, you might want even more power. And so having three levels of power here is a really great way to do that in a little handheld compressor or air duster, it's not a compressor. So these were a few new products I tried cleaning this 1964 Smith Corona Sterling in spring green spring clean, spring green. I really liked these products and I'm going to continue testing this OxyClean product. The Method Imposter from LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner, I don't think I will continue using that. I found that the smell to just be a real big turnoff when it came to using that product. It's not even like it, it, doesn't, it doesn't smell clean. It smells kind of caustic even when you're in a ventilated area. And I'm someone who paints my nails a lot, so I've got a lot of toxic fumes happening in this place. And for some reason, that smell specifically is just so off-putting to me. I also don't like that it leaves a sticky residue. That can attract dust over time. So I much prefer the OxyClean product in this case. 
Although I think out of all of them, I still continue to go to Simple Green the most just because I have the most experience with it. And I've seen machines using that product over time and they still look good a year after I've cleaned them. And I think that's a really big factor here is the longevity of that clean after you've used it. So if you have tried any of these products, let me know down below what your thoughts are on them. And if you have any other cleaning ideas you want me to test on the machines that I'm not supposed to be buying, please let me know down in the comments below. I have lots of other typewriter content here on this YouTube channel, as well as an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you all so much for watching and remind you, you're just my type, writer.